Okay, now we're heading to Abu Ghraib, or Abu Ghraib, or Abu Jurab, which uh, is a dynastic site, but it also has some very curious pre-dynastic elements, a lot of evidence of lost ancient high-technology machining. So this is Abu Ghraib. You can see it looks like a desert wasteland right on the edge though of where there is life and here we find these large bowl like things that were found by Flinders Petrie I believe in the 19th century and you can see the hole that is strategically located right in the center of each one but not at the bottom so very curious these unlikely were done by hand much more likely they were done with some kind of advanced technology. They were not found all together as you see them now, but they were lined up possibly to be sent to the Cairo Museum, but actually never made it there. So you see in terms of the detail, these um, depressions and these weird cog-like knobs Again, we see signs of machine marks in them. So again, likely they were done using some form of high technology. They're also heavily weathered in places. It's most probable that they were found buried underground and um, were lined up like this. Quite strange. And then as we turn, we see the ruins of a small pyramid that was destroyed in some strange manner. Also, there's a slight curve here where uh, the hole enters the bowl as if that was where liquid moved into the bowl. And then around the rim, very machine-like curve or depression as if done by some kind of router. Now, as we advance towards the pyramid, we're coming up first to a very fascinating construction out of stone called the Hotep. And this is comprised of large pieces of the crystalline stone. As you can see, actually there are six pieces and here again, the curvature where the vertical and horizontal surfaces meet are so smooth and even, it's as if they were done by some kind of router. And then we see flat surfaces, which are almost perfectly flat. Very difficult to do by hand. And again, where the horizontal and vertical surfaces meet, we also see some kind of tube drill evidence. And then we have an overview of the, the Hotep. And here you can see with the compass that this little pyramid is about 23 or 24 degrees off north, south, east and west, which is quite curious because normally they're lined up perfectly north, south, east and west. And some of the casing stone is still present, but the whole pyramid, rather than being bashed by vandals, it literally looks like it exploded. And here again we find more evidence of ancient tube drilling. And the hotep is comprised of six pieces. You can see at the bottom there that horizontal machine cutting mark. And some believe that this is actually the lid 
of a shaft that goes down and interconnects with a tunnel system. So the Hotep is made out of a stone called travertine and it is created in places of volcanic activity with liquid water pools. According to our geologist, Susan Moore, there may not be a large enough area of travertine located in Egypt, so it may have actually been brought in from another part of the Middle East. It's in one, two, three, four, five, six sections and perfectly aligned to north, south, east, and west, but the pyramid in behind is 23 degrees off. So the pyramid was created prior to the time of the Pharaonic Egyptians, and in fact, possibly 12,000 plus years ago. This, no one knows when this was made. So again, like we've seen at other locations, especially in the Giza Plateau area, though they say that the pyramids are in such bad shape because they were quarried, um, maybe even during dynastic times, the damage looks cataclysmic, as if it was struck by something, possibly high heat, and that fits in with uh, the theory of Dr. Robert Schock, the geologist, that solar plasma may have actually struck specific parts of the Earth around 12,000 years ago, and that would have caused this cataclysmic damage because the core is just a mess. Uh, you would think that if it was being slowly quarried that the core would still be intact, but it does look like a high heat event just blew and cracked the entire pyramid, including the center. Luckily some of the casing stone is still here, but of course all of the upper casing stone is gone because it would have been literally blown off. Abu Sir and Abu Ghraib are not seen by tourists, and in general they are off limits. You require special permission from the Ministry of Antiquities to visit these sites. The explanation or reasoning for that is unknown, but we are here because we have permission thanks to the Kemet School located in Giza in Egypt. Check out their website at www.chemetology.com. They are the only people, in my opinion, who can properly show you dynastic as well as pre-dynastic, super ancient Egypt. Now on the other side of the pyramid are these sandstone bowls that have three holes drilled in them. Look at the level of wear, uh, weathering and wear on them. They too were most likely found buried underground and they have clearly been vandalized over the course of time. No one has a clue what these originally were used for. Egyptologists say they were bowls for sacrificial blood, but how would you drain the blood out if the hole is not in the bottom? So to me, this entire site, yes, it's been vandalized over the course of time. Some of the stone appears to have scorch heat marks, and so I think this is a very good candidate for the ancient cataclysm of 12,000 years ago. What I'm saying is that 5,000 years ago, the dynastic Egyptians found this and the Giza Plateau and other structures in the area in a state of decay, they renamed them and they reused them for their own purposes. But the, whoever the original builders were still eludes us to this very day.